Genesis chapter 38. It's one of those obscure chapters no, that is seldom read and seldom taught sa mga Bible studies. At hindi lang dahil sa medyo scandalous ang makikita natin dito. Pero pag tinignan niyo yung buong flow ng narrative ng Genesis, it seems that medyo out of place din talaga siya. Kasi kung natandaan niyo in the last session, nag-umpisa tayo sa story ni Joseph, di ba? At familiar naman tayo lahat kay Joseph. His is a uh, one of the most amazing and beautiful stories sa buong Bible. Pero that chapter also ended with a cliffhanger. Binenta siya ng mga kuya niya and credits. And so tayo, as, as readers of the word, gusto na natin malaman kung anong nangyari sa kanya. Tama? Pero instead, this camera shifts to this long and weird bad story of his older brother Judah na parang isiningit lang in between. Kasi nga sa from chapter 39 onwards we will be we will go back and, and, and see the rest of Joseph's saga. No? So bakit ito nandito? Kasi the Holy Spirit must have had a good reason for putting this here specifically for us to read and study. Diba? Well, there's two big reasons. No? Number one is to provide for us a contrast. No? One of my favorite Christian social critics, the Os Guinness, says contrast is the mother of clarity. And that's what we are going to see here. We will see the contrast between Joseph and his brothers, between light and darkness, between good and bad between the sexual restraint ni Joseph na makikita natin in the next chapter and the sexual immorality ni Judah dito sa chapter na to. Alam niyo, when you go to a jewelry store at tumitingin ka ng mga diamond, saan nila nilalagay? They place it on a backdrop of a black velvet, di ba? Bakit nila ginagawa to? It's to provide for you a contrast para lumitaw lalo yung kinang at yung ganda ng diamante. So this story tonight is a black the black velvet, no? This will allow us to see the sparkler and uh, sparkle and the beauty of Joseph's walk with the Lord as we contrast it with his brother Judah's behavior. Now, the second reason kung bakit nandito tong chapter na to, is to provide for us the gene genealogical background of the most important person in the Bible, who is, sino? Jesus. Kasi what we will discover tonight about this guy Judah is that his lineage, although very sinful and dirty, will eventually bring forth our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. At Nakakagulat yun, no? That Jesus has this lineage as shown to us sa Matthew chapter 1. In fact, kung ginotro mo tong listahan na to, you won't see a lot of people you would be proud of. Kung tayo nga ang papapiliin, kung kaninong linya dadaan yung Messiah, I'm sure you would stay far, far away from Judah. Pero, yet, God chose him. No? Now, the camera does shift, no? Kasi while Joseph is down in Egypt for about 20-something years, this chapter, chapter 38, is taking place simultaneously back home. And if you are still wondering kung bakit kailangan pa ipadala ni God si Israel sa Egypt to suffer there for 400 years, well, maybe this story will tell you why. Kasi they were getting corrupted in this land. No? And if they stayed longer, pretty soon, hindi na sila maiiba sa mga pagan idol worshippers ng Canaan. Kakainin sila ng mga religious traditions ng mga tao dito. 
So lahat ng nangyayari may rason, no? God will not waste a single promise, a single event, a single chapter. Everything will come full circle and will reveal his true purpose because he is sovereign. Okay? So, with that said, umpisa na tayo. Pwede na ba kayo sa skandal ni Judah? Okay. Tingnan natin. Chapter 38, verse 1. It happened at that time that Judah went down from his brothers. At what time? Natandaan niyo yung kung kaninong idea na ibenta si Joseph. It was Judah's idea. Diba? And when they lied to Jacob, and when, when they are lying to Jacob na, na patay na siya, ano nangyari? He was inconsolable, di ba? Iyak nang iyak. So every time na maririnig nila yung tatay nila, Joseph, Joseph, sino directly tinatamaan? Si Judah. So the guilt must have taken a toll on him, no? And although we do not know for sure, pero that could be the reason kung bakit siya umalis, umalis sa kanila dito. And it is said here that he became friends with a guy named Hira. So sa verse 1 pa lang, we already see Judah taking a step towards the wrong direction. Kasi si Hira is a pagan friend. Meaning, like the rest of the people sa Canaan, he would not be a believer. No? He is not a person of faith. Alam niyo, there's a reason why when you are sad dahil nalugi ka o iniwan ka ng asawa mo or you are grieving, that you should seek comfort and counsel from, from friends who love the Lord. Kasi what you are going to find out is when you seek comfort from people who, could, who couldn't care less about Jesus and God and the spiritual things, anong advice makukuha mo? They're going to encourage you to do what feels right. Tama? Tara, iinom na lang natin yan. Madali lang yan, babae lang katapat yan. Kung kaya nang gawin sa'yo yan, edi gawin mo din sa kanya. Ganti-gantihan lang. Para fair, di ba? Well, what does the Bible say? The righteous should choose his friends carefully for the way of the wicked leads them astray. Kasi if you don't choose your BFFs carefully, he or she might lead you to a place you don't want to be. Yan yung sinasabi dito. Just like si Judah. Dito kasi he saw there in this place where Hira is hanging out, a daughter of a certain Canaanite whose name was Shua. At tingnan niya to. He took her and went into her and she conceived and bore a son. Kung yung language dito is a bit graphic, I think it's intentional, No? So he saw a Canaanite cutie and he took her and he immediately, immediately sleeps with her. And this began the downward spiral no? eh, kasi he ended up marrying this Canaanite girl and we've been down this road, di ba? From Abraham to Isaac to Jacob, ang reminder lagi is do not marry or cohabitate with the Canaanite women. Bakit? Kasi these people, their religious practices are so repulsive and so sinful that it brings a stench sa, sa, sa ilong ligad. Pero despite that, may kita natin dito that Judah is driven more by his baser instincts. He's driven by lust. And so he takes this woman at nagkaanak sila. At nagkatinginan sila. Teka lang. Ano nga pala ipapangalan natin sa kanya? Err. Yun na. Yun ang pangalan niya. Err. Penis, di ba? <laughs> Now, she conceived again and bore another son. At itong pangalawa was a real barbarian. No? Kaya she called his name Onan, the barbarian. Joke lang. Kailangan natin ng joke. 
Kasi remember, this is a very, very dark chapter. And so now they have two kids, no? Si Ur at si Onan. And yet again, she bore a son. And she called his name Sheila. Hindi ko alam. Baka gusto nila ng babae, no? Kaya Sheila. At sabi dito, Judah was in Chesib when she bore him. Then Judah took a wife for Ur, his firstborn, and her name was Tamar. But Ur, Judah's firstborn son, was wicked in the sight of the Lord, and the Lord put him to death. Now, a lot of times when people read verses like this, ang unang reaction ng marami is, ano to? How could he do this? Why would he do this? I'm not going to believe in a God who does, who does stuff like this. That's so unfair. Well, not really. Kasi alam nyo, sometimes a man could actually become so wicked, so evil, that it's actually an act of mercy for the Lord to take action. Naisip nyo ba yun? A person could be so caught up in sin that they are actually not just destroying their own lives, but the lives of the people around him or her. Kaya minsan, God will, will step in. No? and put this person who is killing himself anyway out of his misery. And in doing so, protect others. Protect those sa paligid niya who are not yet infected. Kasi nga, that's the problem with sin. Di ba? It's contagious. Wicked people suck other people into their own wickedness. Kaya nga sabi sa kan natin kanina, choose your friends wisely. The Bible talks about a sin unto death. And we see that here. So anong kasalanan ni Ur? Di natin alam. Pero we don't need to know, di ba? Kasi sin is sin. And sin kills stuff. For the wages of sin is death, di ba? At alam nyo, iniisip ko lang. Kasi looking at this story... And then looking at my own life. It's really a miracle why God doesn't just kill us all. Alam niyo yun? That God doesn't just wipe us all from the face of the earth for being so disobedient. Pero God is merciful. He is so patient and, and so merciful that we get time and multiple chances. To repent and to, to run to Him. And yet we are so caught up with questioning God. Bakit ganito? Bakit ganyan? Di ba? Now, si Judah, after seeing his firstborn son dead, sabi niya kay Onan, go into your brother's wife and perform the duty of a brother-in-law to her and raise up offspring for your brother. Ano ulit? Punta ka sa byuda ng kuya mo and you marry her. Pero the child that you will produce will not be yours. It will be Ur's kid. Even though Ur is dead. Now, interesting to para sa akin kasi what we are seeing here later on, centuries later actually, sa, sa time ni Moses, this will become an actual law sa Israel. No? It's called the Leverite marriage. At sabi doon, if a man dies bago siya nagkaanak, the younger brother of that man has to step up and, and, and marry the widow. Pero the child that they produce through that union will be considered the child of the dead older brother. Bakit ganon? Kasi it's their way of preserving the properties and the inheritances. Para hindi mapunta sa ibang pamilya kung nag-asawa ng iba yung, yung babae. Okay? Kaya pag Namatay yung kuya, it's the responsibility of the next brother to ensure that the lineage will go on. No? So kung lalaki ka at may kuya ka, you better make sure na maganda yung mapapakasalan niya. Kasi kung mukhang, alam mo na, nako, di ba? So Judah tells Onan, take Tamar to be your wife. 
But Ona knew that the heir would not be his, his. And it came to pass when he went in to his brother's wife that he emitted on the ground, lest he should give an heir to his brother. And the thing he did, which he did, displeased the Lord. Therefore, he killed him also. Now, itong verse na to is often, very often referred to and misused to say that we should not be involved in any kind of contraception. At ito yung panakot nila. Sasabihin nila, si Onan, the barbarian, dito was, was practicing a form of birth control, kaya nagalit si God, kaya siya pinatay. No. Listen, the issue here is not about birth control. Okay? Sa totoo lang, wala kang makikita kahit saan sa Bible where God specifically prohibits family planning. Hindi, hindi abortion, ha? that's that's a different topic altogether. But family planning. Pero alam niyo what the Bible is clear about? 1 Timothy 5.8 says, But if anyone does not provide for his relatives, and especially for members of his household, he has denied the faith and is worse than an unbeliever. So it's not about how many children you choose to have. What's important in the eyes of God is what you are doing with that great responsibility na binigay sa'yo in raising the kids that you have. So, maski isa lang yan, or 25, the instruction remains the same. Okay? So, the issue here is not about family planning, but it's about Onan's family plotting. Kasi this guy is plotting something very, very wicked. He is saying, I'm not going to do what's right. Hindi ako makikinig sa tatay ko. I'm not going to honor my dead brother. I'm not going to raise a child para sa kuya ko. Ano sila? Sinaswerte? Bahala sila sa buhay nila. I want my name to carry the line. Hindi kay kuya. So I'd rather do my own thing. So sige, give me that girl. I'm gonna sleep with her. Pero I'm not going to do any of those other things. And that's his sin. And it has nothing to do with birth control, but with everything has everything to do with Onan trying to manipulate this situation for his gain, for his own glory. But God said no. Yeah, brother number two, also dead. Then Judah said to Tamar, his daughter-in-law, remain a widow in your father's house till my son Sheila has grown. For he said, lest he also die like his brothers and Tamar went and dwelt in her father's house. So Judah is saying, pinakasalan mo yung panganay ko? He's dead. Pinakasalan mo yung sumunod? He's also dead. Uh, <laughs> pwede ba umuwi ka na lang sa mga magulang mo? Di ba? Magpahinga ka muna. Tawagin na lang kita pag medyo malaki na tong si Sheila. But the reality is, it's a lie. Wala talaga siyang intention to do that. No, It's because Judah here is afraid. And he's thinking, oh no. Isa na lang yung anak ko. Pagpati siya namatay dahil sa kung anumang meron dito kay Tamar, then my family line will be gone. And so he lied and, and sent her away. But this is all going to backfire on him. You know? And we'll see that starting in the next verse. Kasi in the course of time, the wife of Judah, Shua's daughter, died. By the way, hindi natin alam kung anong pangalan ng asawa ni Judah. No? Ang nakasulat lang dito is that she was Shua's daughter. Anyway, namatay siya. The Canaanite beauty, the mother of Ur and Onan and Sheila, died. And when Judah was comforted, or wanting to be comforted, no, yan yung idea dito. He went up to Timnah to his ship sharers, he and his friend Hira, the Abdulamite. So he's like, ang lungkot ko. I need to grieve the loss of my wife. I need to go through this process. So, anong ginawa niya? 
pinuntahan niya ulit yung BFF niya, si Hira. And again, as the Bible keeps reminding us, walk not in the counsel of the ungodly. Kasi kahit paano mo pa ikot-ikotin, an ungodly friend would never give you godly advice. Tama? So sabi dito, they went together to Timna. Ano meron doon? Well, it, this is also the place where Samson met Delilah. No? And maybe that can give us a clue about what this place is. Di ba? So Hira said, Tara, let's go there then and shear sheep. And by the way, just so you know, sheep shearing sa, sa time na yun, usually it also comes with the festival. No? So there may be a celebration where they are going. Kaya gusto nila pumunta doon. And when Tamar was told, your father-in-law is going up to Timna to share sheep, she took off her, her widow's garments and covered herself with a veil and wrapping herself up and sat at the entrance of Enneim, which is on the road to Timna. For she saw that Sheila was grown up and she had not been given she had been given to him in marriage. Okay? So, tandaan nyo, naghihintay pa din si Tamar, di ba? Years have already passed since umalis siya sa bahay ni Judah. And she's like, legal age na dapat si Sheila ngayon. Bakit di pa din niya ako tinatawag? At unti-unti nag-sink in sa kanya. No? Siguro na-scam ako. Siguro, wala na talagang plano ibigay sa akin si Sheila. So paano na? Because that's a big reason for her to panic. no? Kasi in that culture, in her situation, being a widow, pag hindi binigay sa kanya si Sheila, wala na siyang financial support. As in, totally. Kasi being a widow, uh, being the widow of Judah's son, si Judah and si Judah alone, can call can can tell her who she marries next so hindi siya pwedeng basta-basta lang mag-asawa ng iba okay kaya kung sin son lang sa ni Juda she stuck forever dito sa sitwasyon niya so ano ginawa niya she did what a lot of us have a tendency to do she took matters into her own hands and she covered herself up with a veil Sabi dito, if that sounds classy para sa inyo, it's not. Okay? Kasi what this means is she is basically dressing up as a prostitute with the intention of seducing Judah. Grabe, di ba? Guys, weak faith or worse, no faith at all drives people to do foolish things and desperate things instead of trusting God. Agree ba kayo doon? Kasi si Tamar dito, at some point, sure na sure na siya sa sarili niya that Judah is not going to fulfill his promise anymore. He's not going to allow me to marry Sheila. So sino tutulong sa akin? Kaya I need to do something drastic. And how did that turn out? Well, Tingnan natin. Now Judah walks by and he saw her and he thought she was a prostitute for she had covered her face. Now yung original Hebrew netong word na prostitute dito is very very specific. No? It's a temple prostitute. Kasi sa lugar na yon where, where Judah and Hira are hanging out there were Canaanite people and part of their worship sa, sa Canaanite god nila involves temple prostitution. At ganyan ka nila i-entice to convert into their religion. No? They have women, respectable women, actually sa society nila who are, who are also serving in their temples as prostitutes to entice men, other men, to, to convert into their religion and to follow their practices and rituals. Again, this is all to make us understand kung bakit ayaw ni God na makipag 
intermingle, intermarry yung mga tao niya sa mga Canaanites. Okay? And this also speaks about the state of mind ni Judah dito. Diba? Kasi being in Abraham and Isaac and Jacob's family, for sure, for sure, alam niya lahat ng warnings and promises ni God. Pero instead, he follows his friend Hira. And he immerses himself into this, this pagan culture. Nga pala. Naisip niyo rin ba? Hindi gagawin ni Tamar to if Judah isn't so, the sort of person who does this. No? So alam niya. Alam niya from her time living in Judah's house that her father-in-law has the propensity to do stuff like this. Kaya hindi to first time. She knows what Judah is looking for dyan sa, sa team na. Kaya ganun ang ginawa niya. So he turned to her at the roadside and said, Come, let me come in to you. For he did not know that she was his daughter-in-law. She said, What will you give me that you may come in to me? Teka, hindi to libre. Anong bibigay mo muna sa Anong muna bibigay mo sa akin? Okay. Ano nga pala? Wala akong dalang pera. Pwede ba bigyan na lang kita nitong... Pwede na lang kita bigyan ng kambing? And Tamar agrees. Sabi niya, sige, pero I will only agree if you give me a pledge. Kasi wala dito yung kambing. Para may, may, may pinanghahawakan ako. Para alam ko na hindi mo ako tatakbuhan. So he said, so what pledge shall I give you? She replied, your signet and your cord and your staff that is in your hand. So he gave them to her and went in to her and she conceived by him. Now, before we get to that, I want to take... I want you to take note now. Kasi itong in-underline ko, these three specific things na hiningi ni Tamar, hindi itong malilit na bagay. Ha? These are significant things sa buhay ni Judah. Kasi a signet ring is a ring that a man would wear para gamitin as a seal for business transactions. No? I'm sure nakakita na kayo ng ganyan, di ba? Yung stamp na may signature mo and he used wax. And so the signet ring spoke of the person. Kasi it's basically their identity. Yan yung signature mo eh. The cord basically are, are, are bracelets. No? So ito yung mga suot niya. Yung mga bling-bling niya. And this would literally represent a man's wealth. Maski ngayon, di ba? These, these celebrities and NBA players would wear these big shiny chains. Para saan? To show off to people na mayaman sila. Tama? Ano pa? The third thing that A Tamar asked for is the staff. Now what does the staff speak of? Position. Even to this day, that idea has been carried down throughout history. Kasi anong sinasabi natin ngayon? Okay lang yan. My staff will handle it. Yung staff ko ang bahala dyan. And that speaks of your position as a superior. Di ba? So ano sinasabi ni Tamar dito? This girl who in Judah's eyes was a temple prostitute. Anong sinasabi niya? She is saying, what do I want? I want your person. I want your possessions. I want your power. I'm going to strip you of everything. And that is not coincidental dito sa story na to. No? Kasi that is exactly what happens when a man or a woman gives themselves over to, to prostitution or idolatry. I, I, adultery. You lose your person. You lose your possessions. You lose your position. Tell me I'm wrong. When a man falls into prostitution, immorality, any kind of sexual activity, sexual sin, 
the cost is high. It's exponentially higher than whatever you paid that prostitute. Because the price is painful. What do I want? I want everything. And Judah, dahil hat na hat siya, he gave it to her. He gave everything to her. And you know, isn't it amazing how this story is being repeated over and over and over again throughout human history? A man giving it all up, giving all it all away for sex. Diba? And oh, by the way, in addition to all of that, Tamar gets pregnant dahil dito. So paano na? Let's see. Then she arose and went away. And taking off her veil, she put on garments, on the garments of her widowhood. When Judah sent the young goat by his friend, the Abdulamite, to take back the pledge from the woman's hand, he did not find her. So ito si Judah. He's like, okay, let's send the goat so I can get my things back. At napansin niya ba, he did not even bring the goat himself. Kasi baka may makakita sa kanya, baka masira pangalan niya. And that is so us, di ba? We put veils para hindi makita ng mga tao ang tunay na ginagawa natin. And so he sent his good friend, Hira. Pero anong problema? He did not find her. She is not there anymore. And that's so typical of people who knowingly step into sin, di ba? We justify it in our minds. Okay lang yan, minsan lang naman to. Wala naman akong sinasaktan dito. Kung ano yung kailangan ko i-sacrifice, I can just get it back later. Maintindihan naman ni God yan, maintindihan naman ng asawa ko. I will just say sorry after and everything will be fine. But guys, guess, guess what? Everything will not be fine. Proverbs 6.32 says, He who commits adultery. At yung word dito does not just mean adultery of a married person, okay? But any kind of sexual immorality. He who commits adultery lacks sense. Because he who does it destroys himself. Why does it say that? Because every time someone has sex outside of the bonds of marriage, part of his or her soul is lost. Our culture today doesn't understand this. They think it's all about the body, physical, sensual, sexual. No, the Bible says it's so much more than that. It's about your soul, which is your mind, your emotion, your will. It's your person. So ikaw, ako, or anyone who is involved in immorality lose part of that soul each time we do it. Tingnan niyo si Judah dito. He is reduced to asking, who am I? My signet ring? My, my person? I don't know. I don't even know who I am anymore. I don't have what I used to have. My, my bracelets. My, my possession, it's all gone because I persisted in sin. I continued on because culture says that it's cool because TV and media glorifies it constantly. It makes light of it and it made me think it's no big deal. Everyone's doing it. And as Judah is finding out here, it is a huge deal. Because whatever you lost, you're not getting it back. Because look what Hira said. I even asked the man of the place, where is the cult prostitute who was in Enaim at the roadside? And they said, no cult prostitute has been here. So he returned to Judah and said, I have not found her. And the man of the place said, no cult prostitute has been here. I look everywhere. Pero wala talaga. 
At ang weird pa, sabi ng mga tao doon, wala naman tumatambay na, na prostitute daw doon sa daan na yan. Hindi ko alam ano nangyari, pero she's, she's gone. Together with all your stuff. Your possession, your person, your possession, they're all gone. And Judah replied, let her keep her things at the things as her own or we shall be laughed at. You see, I sent this young goat and we did not find her. And so Judah, realizing this, he's like, mag-damage control na lang tayo. Kung ayaw niyang magpakita, uh, ano pa magagawa natin? Kanya na yan. Huwag na natin palakihin yung isyo, baka magkaskandalo pa. Tsaka ayaw ko ding magmukhang hindi ako sumusunod sa usapan. Which is so ironic coming from Judah. Di ba? This guy who didn't keep his end of the bargain with Tamar. Kaya nga nang layari lahat to. All of it has backfired on him because he did not honor his word in, his, in the first place. Which brings us to this point. Friends, a hallmark of God's people, of true children of God, is the willingness to honor obligations and commitments, to keep their word even if it costs them, even if it's expensive. Alam niyo bakit? Kasi then your morality is not dictated by the circumstances. Hindi yung pag nabuking ka o naipit ka o wala ka ng choice. Proverbs 15 forces, He who honors those who fear the Lord, who swears to his own hurt and does not change. Guys, please remember this verse. Kasi I pray that every person in here will be known as someone who swears to his own hurt. I gave my word so I will keep my word. Even if it hurts. Yan yung ibig sabihin niya. And Jesus will add to that sa Sermon on the Mount by saying, let your yes be yes and your no be no. Kasi yun, kung paiba-iba ka, should you draw back in the small and simple transactions, whether it's in your relationships, the promises that you make to your kids, or in business transactions, if you draw back from your word, into small things, then what's stopping you from drawing back in the larger ones? Tama? That's why integrity is so important sa buhay natin. Because it's not motivated by anything else but by your fear of the Lord. And in the extreme case, na imposible mo talagang ma-fulfill yung sinabi mo. At least, be humble enough to own up to it. To admit it. To say sorry and ask for forgiveness. Not cover it up and make excuses for it. Guys, that's integrity 101. We teach it to our, to our kids. Di ba? Pero are we doing it ourselves? So this verse, it's definitely not talking about Judah, no? But I pray, I pray that it is talking about you and me. Okay? Let's look at verse 24. About three months later, Judah was told, Tamar, your daughter-in-law, has been immoral. Moreover, she is pregnant by immorality. And Judah said, Judah said, bring her out, let her be burned. Wow! Diba? Ano ginawa niya? My own daughter-in-law involved in prostitution? My goodness! Her be burned! Guys, isn't it amazing how bad our sin looks when somebody else does it? It's not that big of a deal kung ako mismo yung gumagawa ng kasalanan. Pero if say, I see somebody else do it, I'm shocked. Hindi ka na nahiya sa sarili mo. And that's our human nature, di ba? 
we are often most angry at and most upset with the very sins that we ourselves are struggling with. I hope na pansin nyo din yun. Madalas when you are so angry with another person's sin, many, many times, it's actually the very sin that you yourself is struggling with. Let her be burned, sabi ni Judah. Sa totoo lang, if there's anyone in this story who deserves to be burned, to be executed, who should it be? It's him. Diba? And that's the exact reason why in Matthew 7, Jesus tells us to judge not that you, for you, that you not be judged. For with that judgment you pronounce, you will be judged and the measure you use it will be measured to you. And this is not a statement against sincerely calling one's attention if he or she, uh, what, what he or she is doing is truly wrong. Okay? Kasi okay lang yun. This statement is against judging and condemning other people when you are in fact doing the same exact thing. That's why in the very next verse it will say, why do you see the speck that is in your brother's eye but you do not notice the log that is in your own eye? Jesus is telling us if there, is, there are equally big sins in your own life, take care of that first. Don't go around pointing fingers at other people, especially if it's the same sin or at least a similar sin that you are struggling with. Because doing so will make you what? A hypocrite. Diba? And so how did Tamar respond to this? Tingnan nyo. As she was being brought out, as they were preparing to, to burn her, basically, she sent word to her father-in-law by the man to whom this belonged. I am pregnant. And she said, please identify those whose these are, the signet and the cord and the staff. Pansinin nyo, Judah wasn't even here at this moment. He is so disgusted with what, with, and he wants nothing to do with Tamar. So she has to send word to her father-in-law. Sabi niya sa mga tao doon, teka, teka lang, bago niyo ako patayin. I have these things. Please show them to Judah. Kasi yung nakabuntis sa akin, well, kanya to. So kung gusto yung malaman kung sino yung tatay, ito yun. So please, just just bring this to him. Yare, di ba? So paano na? Then Judah identified them. And said, she is more righteous than I. Since I did not give her to my son, Sheila. And he did not know her again. <clears throat> Alam nyo, I heard a wise uncle once say, Sabi niya, Walang nahuhulog sa bangin na malayo sa bangin. And he's so right. Di ba? In contrast with Joseph, who will run away from the seduction of Potiphar's wife, so next chapter. Si Dito, Dito, si Judah, he did not run away. Sinalubong pa niya. He ran straight, right straight into it. And he paid the price. And now he's realizing, oh, what have I done? Kanina, kill her, burn her. Pero now, she is more righteous than me. Wow. So he recognizes his guilt. He recognized that he, in a sense, forced Tamar to do what she did. Too bad lang that it has to come out this way. Di ba? Na kailangan pa niyang mapahiya for him to realize that. I know it also, this reminds me of another story in the Bible. It's of King David. Because from his window, he saw Bathsheba bathing. 
And he wants her so bad. Pero ang problema lang is she's married. But it doesn't matter sa isip niya. Hari naman ako. And so he takes her and gets her pregnant. And he decides to, to cover up his sin by sending her husband, Uriah, to the front lines of, 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 of a war that is currently happening to get him killed. So sa isip niya, okay na. Patsheba is mine. Wala na tayong sabit. Or so he thought. Because his sin will soon find him out. Kasi si Nathan, yung prophet nung time na yun, comes to David. And he's like, David, may problema tayo. And David is like, problema? Wala yan. Tell me, ano yun? I'm good at solving problems. Nakita mo yung ginawa ko kay Goliath? Easy. And Nathan says, okay, so here's the thing. Kasi I really hope you can fix this. There are two men in the city. One's a rich guy and one's a poor man. The rich man, he owns so much. Hindi mo mabilang kung ilan yung mga alaga niya. Pero the poor man, he has only one tiny little lamb. Yan lang actually yung property na meron siya. And he loves this lamb so much. They eat together, they sleep beside each other, para siyang parte ng pamilya nila. And David says, okay, I like what I'm hearing. Sige, go on. The Nathan says, pero ito ang problema. Kasi the rich man who has thousands of sheep decides that I'm gonna take this one little land nitong pamilyang to and I'm gonna cook it. I'm gonna serve it to my guests. Even though he has thousands of sheep of his own. At dyan nanilim yung paningin ni David. Ano? Saan nakadira tong taong to? Tara, puntahan natin. This man deserves to die. And Nathan says, David, you're that man. It's actually you. And at that moment, dyan siya natauhan. Kasi his own sin has found him out. And David, he was so convicted that he dropped down and cried out, I have sinned against the Lord. Sabi niya. Guys, that's repentance. And again, isn't it this interesting how disgusting our own sin looks when you put it on somebody else? Diba? We love grace. We talk about grace all the time. Tama? But only when it's brought to us. Pero we genuinely struggle with giving it to other people. Agree ba kayo? Kasi isipin nyo, as we read through these crazy stories in the Bible about betrayals and deception and prostitution, superstition, murder, and all that stuff. Reading about it, ano usually reaction natin? Grabe naman tong taong to. Really? These are the chosen people of God? Bakit sila ganyan? Ba't ang titigas ng ulo nila? Ba't ang wild nila? Ba't hindi na sila natuto? Well, let me ask you this. Are you better? Are you better? Kasi if you are thinking that, then pride is another sin that you have to deal with. Kasi then, how different are you from Judah and David? Diba? Gusto niyo malaman ano sinabi ni Apostle Paul? Sabi niya, I am the worst of all sinners. This from the guy who is generally regarded as the greatest of all apostles. Who is probably the best example of a Christian whom God used mightily and, and powerfully. This from the guy who wrote half of the New Testament na binabasa natin ngayon. Pero he says, I am the worst of all sinners. Guys, until you realize that in your own life, 
until you realize your own sin and need for forgiveness. Sabihin ko sa'yo, you will never be free. What is wrong with the world today? Laging tinatanong yan, di ba? What is wrong with the world today? Corruption, poverty, greed, K-pop. Yan yung mga usual na sagot, di ba? Alam niyo, theologian G.K. Chesterton was once asked this by a reporter. What's wrong with the world? At ito sagot niya. It's very simple. Dear sir, regarding your article, what's wrong with the world? I am. Yours truly, G.K. Chesterton. Why do you see the speck that is in your brother's eye? but do not notice the love that is in your own eye. So let me ask you again. What is wrong with the world? You are. I am. And unless we recognize that, unless you drop down to your knees and came to that point where David came to and say, Lord, I have sinned against you. Guys, you will never be free. Ako, I know that my name is written in the book of life. Not because of anything I've done. Not because I'm so great. Actually, it has nothing to do with my worthiness or, or, or your worthiness. But it has everything to do with what Christ did on that cross. That's why I have no bows. Wala akong mapagmalaki. Because God and His great love saw that I am killing myself in sin. And that it would one day condemn me to eternal death. Pero Jesus said, it's okay. I paid the price. I paid for everything to redeem you so that you could be free and spend eternity with me. That's grace. Listen, God has a way of taking jerks like you and jerks like me. And with amazing grace, he can redeem all of us who choose to put their full faith and trust in him. All who have a repentant heart, like see David, Lord, I have sinned against you. I'm hopeless. I am broken. I am like Judah in this story. Please forgive me. Because I am so done with that. I am so done with being a slave to sin. Yeah, from this day forward, I will just trust in you. Save me, Lord. Guys, if... God is not done with the likes of David and Judah and Tamar, those who would, many would think have gone too far. Then he definitely is not done with us. Amen? Now, balik tayo. Kasi hindi pa tapos yung chapter. May last part pa. So, buntis si Tamar. Di ba? And when the time of her labor came, when her twins, there were twins in her womb. And when she was in labor, one put out a hand. And the midwife took, midwife took and tied the scarlet thread on his hand saying, this one came out first. So may maliit na kamay na lumabas. And the midwife, she's, she immediately tied the scarlet thread on his hand para palatandaan no? kung sino yung panganay. But as he drew back his hand, behold, his brother came out. So medyo parang yung, excuse me, so medyo parang yung story ni Jacob at Esau, di ba? So there's a struggle. And she said, what well, a bridge you have made for yourself. Therefore, she called his name Perez, which means breakthrough. Kasi how did you break out? Nakalabas na yung kamay nung isa, but somehow you still got through. Afterward, his brother came out with a scarlet thread on his hand, and his name was called Zira, 
which means rising. So breakthrough and rising. So anong significance nito para sa atin? Well, these two babies is actually a picture, no? Sort of a preview, if you will, of Christ himself. See, what we are seeing here is actually the beginning of the scarlet thread story that runs throughout the Bible. Because from this story here, we will see it go through another prostitute in the line of Jesus named Rahab. It's a book of Joshua, whose own scarlet cord saved her life when the city of Jericho fell. And that same theme will run throughout the Old Testament. And all the way up to the cross of Calvary, where Jesus himself will have scarlet, the color of his blood all over his wrist, as he hung on that tree. Jesus, who, who the Bible says, even though he himself has no sin, became sin for us. Parang tong dalong batang to, inosente, pero they were marred by, since birth by the terrible sin of Judah. And Tamar, diba? And like what we are reading here, when Jesus came into the scene, nilabas na yung kamay niya for the world to see and got his wrist wrapped in blood, in scarlet. Tapos he comes back into the womb of the tomb where he lays there for three days. But then a miracle happened. Because death has no right to leave him there, diba? So one burst out. It's the resurrected Jesus. In fact, yung pangalan ng may tali sa kamay, his name literally means just that, diba? Rising. So it's a beautiful, beautiful picture of Jesus, no? Pero Paul, isn't that stretching it a little bit? Parang ginawan mo lang ng kwento. Dalong baby to, how could both point to Jesus? Well, may papakita ako sa inyo. Let's go back to Matthew chapter 1. Sa genealogy ni Jesus. Kasi there's something very interesting dito. Look, Abraham was the father of Isaac. And Isaac was the father of Jacob. And Jacob was the father of Judah and his brothers and Judah, the father of Perez, and Zerah by Tamar. So lahat ng nakasulat dito, lahat ng nakalista, tatay, anak, tatay, anak. Ganyan yung format, di ba? Pero pansinin niyo, both twins are specifically named dito sa genealogy ni Jesus. Although kay Perez lang dumaan yung physical bloodline. Bakit ganon? Kasi nga, they both point to Jesus. Galing, di ba? Now, sino pa ang nakalista dito na medyo out of place? Sino? Si Tamar, di ba? It's very unusual to see a woman's name sa mga genealogy sa Bible. Pero Tamar is here. And it's so interesting for me that the Lord would say, I want this woman who did things that were very, very questionable, who dressed up like a prostitute, who tricked his father-in-law in such a way that she became pregnant by him. She was deceptive and manipulative, and yet, and yet, the Lord says, she will be connected to my son. Why? Because where sin abounds, Grace abounds so much more. While it's grace, unmerited, undeserved, unearned favor, that's grace. And Tamar's story is a powerful, powerful proof of the unbelievable and wonderful grace of God. So if today one can say with all honesty and brokenness, I realize that I have messed up. That I have done what I should have done. That I am dead in my sin. Kung ganyan ang puso mo, I have good news for you. 
Kasi this story goes on to say that from that mess, from all that incest and compromise and deception and immorality, from all of that comes Jesus Christ, the Lion of Judah, the descendant of Tamar. And later on, this very same Jesus, the New Testament, takes this woman who is caught in the very act of adultery, standing condemned before the scribes and the Pharisees, men with rocks in their hands ready to stone her. And Jesus said, let him who is without sin be the first to throw a stone at her. And one by one, the mob went away until Jesus was left alone with her. Then Jesus asked, where are they? Sana sila? Where are your accusers? Has no one condemned you? And she answered, no one, Lord. And Jesus says, neither do I condemn you. Go your way and sin no more. Because you are forgiven. You are free. Take note, hindi sin no more, pero last chance mo na to. Ha? Pag inulit mo to, bahala ka na sa buhay mo. No. But go on your way and sin no more because you are not going to be that kind of woman anymore. Guys, that's the gospel. That's my hope and your hope. That's the opportunity given to every single one of us dito. Because all of us have sinned and like this woman, have fallen short. Pero take heart kasi tonight Christ is extended, extending that same nail-scarred hand of grace and forgiveness to you. A sinner who deserves to hang on that cross and spend eternity separated from God in hell. But the scandal of the gospel was that it wasn't you on that tree, diba? It was that spotless, sinless Lamb of God who died in your place. Jesus Christ, who knew no sin, became sin for us that we might become the righteousness of God in Him. Guys, that's the gospel. It's grace-centered. And you can deny it all you want. Pero you cannot, you really cannot find life without it. Because ultimately, this gospel is the only hope for those of us who one day will have to face a righteous God and have to give an account. And it is through this gospel that the only satisfactory account that we can give is that our debt has been paid by him in full. By the one who lived and died and rose again and is coming again to judge the living and the dead. And to redeem those who have faith in him. Let's end with Romans 3. For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. And are justified by his grace as a gift. Through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus whom God put forward as a propitiation by his blood to be received by faith. This was to show God's righteousness because in his divine forbearance, he had passed over former sins. It was to show his righteousness at the present time so that he may be just and the justifier of the one who has faith in Jesus. Then what becomes of our boasting? It is excluded. By what kind of law? By law of works? No. But by the law of faith. Friends, if the Lord spoke to you tonight, if you are still not sure where you stand before him, I suggest that after we end this session, just drop down to your knees and cry out to him. Repentance literally means a changed mind. And I cannot do that for you. This is the work of the Holy Spirit. It's between you and the Lord. 
So if you are at that point, throw yourself at God and cry out to him in faith until you know he saved you. Until you have that assurance, not given by men, but given by the Holy Spirit that God will bring upon you to change you. Pero paano ko malalaman? Paano ko malalaman if I'm truly saved? Oh, you will know. Kasi there will be some sense of your guilt being taken away. There may even be a sense of joy, a sense of peace. At di lang yun, you will begin to live a different life. Will I be without sin? No. In fact, you will struggle with sin all the more. Pero yan na nga yung point, no? Kasi you will struggle with it instead of walking along with it as a friend. And little by little, you will change. You will be changed. Guys, the evidence that you are truly converted. The evidence that at one time in your life that you really repented and really believe is that you are still repenting and believing until today. Because it means that you are growing in Christ. Diba? Friends, don't, don't wait. Turn to Him tonight. Pwede ko ba kayong pag-pray before we end? Just want to pray for you guys. Father, you know me. Stand before you in the name of our Lord, your Son, Jesus Christ. I fear you because you're one to be feared. And I love you because you love me first. Panginoon, alam mo naman that I am a man of unclean lips. And I am here among people also with unclean lips. You know our culture, Lord, how against you it really is. Your people, Lord, you who are so influenced by all that is wrong. I pray tonight that you would turn the heart of these people back to you. And that they would honor you and fear you and love you. That everything else would be like filthy rags to them. Father, work here tonight. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Send me Amen. Thanks, Paul.
Stop. 